the end is near. In every corner of America, people believe our world is changing. The moment I saw the planes hit the towers, I really woke up. To them, civilization is falling apart. It's gonna be mayhem and hell. And the rest of us are in denial. They call themselves preppers, and they're getting ready for the apocalypse. There'll be mass starvation, disease, no medicine. I look forward to when Mother Nature takes back what's hers. They're piling up guns and food, but what they really need is the perfect place to lay low, real low. Enter Scott Bales and Deep Earth Bunkers. So what are the most important things that you're looking for in a bunker? I will go to great lengths to protect my family, even if it means taking another person's life. Get your water! I want to use it for my training facility. You never tell anyone where you're putting your bunker. Uh-oh, what happened? The people who are prepping will kill you for anything that will help them survive. It's the first time a bunker client's had something stolen from him. When is this board going on, dude? I got to get the electrical run. These guys need to get their ass rolling. We're probably going to be here until the sun comes up in the morning. It's coming. If you're not ready, you're already dead. My name is Scott Bales, and I own Deep Earth Bunkers. I build bunkers to protect people from the end of the world. We started off with storm shelters, but we had prepper clients calling us constantly trying to get us to build bunkers. We already have hundreds of these things in the ground. Scott's an engineer by trade. Every day he pushes design and construction to the limit, creating the strongest and most unique bunkers on earth. I am a bathtub designer. I go in a bathtub, I fill it up all the way. I can think of hundreds of things for us to build. He is always going. He doesn't sleep. You never know what he's going to think of. A large RC helicopter that has a 2,500 milliwatt laser on it. He is eccentric, Boom. flamboyant. Plastic storm shelters of fiberglass. He is barely tethered to this earth. Pop-up turrets that can shoot 10,000 rounds and will follow motion. And I thought of it in the tub. That's what I like working here, because you never know what's going to happen. All right, all right. Today, Scott's in the mountains putting the finishing touches on a 1,700 square foot bunker. Like all his builds, it's fully off the grid. With multiple generators for power, filtered air, a 7,000 gallon water tank, and a full service sewage system. Look at this dirt pile, man. We had to dig the side of a mountain to put this thing in. Scott's 21-year-old son, Alex, is on site for some on-the-job training. I thought it'd be a great opportunity to show him a finished bunker that's actually buried in the ground. Scott's bunkers are equipped with an above-ground hatch, leading to an underground staircase and an armored blast door. Check this out. Look how much this looks like a living room in a house. Preppers just don't want a steel box in the ground. This is way different. <laughs> I'm welding it together to having a bunch of furniture inside. I'm just used to helping build them. I don't get to see what they look like totally finished. Gonna put a plasma screen right here. So I can watch TV when the world ends. When you use water in a bunker, Al, how many gallons per person should you use per day? When you're in prepper mode, it's two. Two? At your normal house every day, you actually use 15. I would love for Alex to run this business one day, but right now, I'm not too sure he's ready for it. This right here, Alex, is a prepper's paradise. So this is basically what people do, is they bring all their stuff in here. When the hits the fan, they come into their bunker, and they got food to last for years. So what's this, Alex? The escape hatch, right? Any prepper knows that you have to have more than one way in and more than one way out. I do want to take over the business someday. I'm going to have to learn everything. This is the first bunker that we've ever done that has a bidet in it on the customer's request. And no matter what, I have to fulfill what they want. They are what our business is all about, people prepping for disasters. Our bunkers are unique. We build them as close to being at home as possible to make you feel more comfortable when you're in that bunker for an extended period of time. Extreme weather and a volatile economy have triggered an explosion of new preppers. Scott's Texas plant has been bombarded with new orders. 
people are touring the shop, checking out our badass products. This is a 12 man. Okay. And this is a seven man. We love it when clients take that extra step to come in and check out our products in person. You must be Shay. You must be Scott. Hey. Prepper Shay Degan is a former cop and a master military tactician. He's been stockpiling weapons and supplies for years. If gets the fan or you can't protect yourself, you're in trouble. You've got some issues. Today, Shay's taking his prep to the next level. So what are the most important things that you're looking for in a bunker? Obviously, I want to have a lot of the similar amenities that you would have in a house. Sleeping quarters, a living area. I want to make certain that I can protect my family. I've got a wife and two kids. My number one priority is to protect my wife and children. When my daughter was born, it wasn't about me anymore. I will go to great lengths to protect my family, even if it means taking another person's life. My biggest fear is social unrest. We are on the verge of having another recession. When people get desperate, they do desperate things. Homes are broken in two. Businesses are looted. Chaos ensues. If the government collapses and you aren't a prepper, you don't have the things in place to protect yourself and your family, you're in trouble. You have civilized folks that can turn uncivilized very, very quickly, become survival of the fittest. Shay's dedication to prepping has evolved past protecting his family. What do you want? What do you want? He's teaching the public. Your neighbors, you could be cooking out with them, doing barbecuing. One day and the next day they become a threat. So you got to be able to protect yourself. Two years ago, he opened 88 Tactical, a 160-acre complex in northern Nebraska. 88 Tactical Group is a training organization. We've taken all of our law enforcement training, and we've opened up a number of courses for civilians. To test his students' tactical skills, Shea runs them through live combat scenarios. This is a bug out drill to a bunker. They're basically going to be stopped in a kill zone. Give us your water! Give us your water! One down over here. Anybody hurt? Anybody hit? End scenario! End scenario! In the prepper world, Shea is a big player. We gotta make this bunker the absolute best one we have ever built. But Shea needs his bunker to be more than just an underground home. I want to use it for my training facility. Training facility? What do you mean? Like a post-bunker reintegration course, teaching people how to live in the bunkers. It's got to be a dual purpose setup, basically. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to reintegration. My 88 Dan, Tactical is beta testing a new training course. Shea's company is working on a new program to teach people how to live in a bunker and how to integrate into society after the bunker. You and your bunker buddies will acquire and demonstrate the necessary knowledge and skills to properly assess your condition. Organize you know, the people that are taking this class are your normal, average folks. They're the people that live across the street from you, the people that you work with. You don't have to be categorized as being crazy to engage in purchasing a bunker. So this is where the bunker is going to be placed, which is really, it's ideal. It's next to the house for protection piece of the family, and then it's also close to the classroom. Clients call us with crazy ideas all the time. Shay is actually going to show people where his bunker is. You can't get any more crazy than that. I can already see right now that we are going to have to put one hell of an engineered door in this thing because everybody's going to know where it is. And the it's the fan. Right. They're coming for your bunker. I don't care what you've trained right. them. They right. naturally are going to come right to the bunker. The door has got to be able to stop trained guys from yeah. getting through it. Well, that's why I'm relying on you, Scott. Shay's bunker needs to hold four people for up to six months. Scott decides on a three-unit bunker complex with over 1,100 square feet of underground space, a living room and full kitchen, storage for over six months of food, and a sleeping wing with a full bathroom. Total cost, $450,000. To live underground, there's a bunch of stuff you have to have. Clean air, water, and a solid septic system. Shea's bunker gets fresh air through a nuclear biological chemical filter. The sewage will be collected in underground tanks. And for fresh water, Shea's property holds a major advantage. Shea's bunker has an underground well that's dug 700 feet down to an aquifer under the earth. He'll have water forever. While the floor team starts cutting and grinding the bunker's steel shell, Scott dives into the most complicated part of the build the blast door. 
The door is the most important part of any bunker or shelter. If you're going to get in any of our products, it's going to be through the door. So that's the most important thing for us to test. We built our own debris testing center. We test everything that goes out the door to make sure it's perfect. Enter the Air Cannon. Our pneumatic air cannon is for shooting giant 2 by 4s over 600 miles an hour. It allows me to make sure our products are safe. The first door we're going to try is one that you would buy from the store that you think would protect you in your house. On five, one, two, three, four, five. It went clean through. This door failed miserably. It went through our wall, too. If you don't buy a real well-engineered door, this is what you get. Let's go get the proper door. Scott has chosen an $8,000 bullet-resistant steel door. It's FEMA rated, built to withstand an F5 tornado with debris flying at over 100 miles an hour. With our pneumatic air shooter, we're going to be hitting it at approximately 180 pounds per square inch, which should put three, 400 mile an hour hit on it. If everything turns out well, this will be the door that's on Shay's bunker. Launch that bad boy as fast as you can, man. On five, one, two, three, four, fire! Coming up, when a prepper's hideout is raided, Somebody stole my generator. His worst fears are realized. You're gonna have some type of catastrophic event that will change everything. For Prepper Shea DeGan, peace and prosperity are fragile. If there's a financial collapse, the banks don't have the money. People can't access their money. Fear sets in, the panic ensues. A uh, prepper is someone who prepares for the worst, but hopes for the best. Shea has contracted Deep Earth to build an 1,100 square foot bunker, equipped with a blast door strong enough to keep all the chaos outside from coming in. But first, the door needs to survive Scott's R&D setter. On five, one, two, three, four, fire! Damn. <laughs> Holy moly. Damn it. Oh, man. No. man. Right through the door. This door would easily pass any FEMA test, but for us, that's not good enough. I'm sorry, guys, but we nope. got to get back to the drawing board on this. Okay. That's embarrassing to have that thing sticking through there like that. Scott just turned an $8,000 door into a worthless paperweight. I'm pissed, but it's better to find out the door's limits right here in the plant. If we installed this door in Shay's bunker in a real-life situation and it failed, it could kill him and his family. While the guys work up a new strategy for the door, Scott stuck putting out another fire. Hello? Uh-oh, what happened? Somebody stole my freaking generator. Mike's a bunker client of mine. Somebody stole his brand new generator. The generator had a concrete bottom with four concrete walls. It was buried two feet under the earth. We put in a nice bunker for him. He's happy. And then, bam, somebody steals the generator. I take it real personally that they actually got it out of the ground. I was wondering if you had any type of uh, security options for me or anything. Mike Hagens and his family live on the Florida coast. But his fear of catastrophic flooding pushed him to place his bunker. 300 miles inland. My bunker will protect me from tsunamis. I'm up over 1,500 feet. Walk down that path right there, Nick. The bunker is Mike's bug out location. He could go down first. This is where he'll bring his family if and when the end comes. The reason I wanted to get a bunker, peace of mind. Two years ago, Deep Earth Bunkers built Mike a $70,000 underground home. It's eight by seven by 30, the steel is strong enough to hold the force of an AK-47 shot. I'm prepping for at least six months. I think that's a good time frame to let things cool down. If we can stay down here and under the radar for that long, I think that'll be sufficient. Mike has spent thousands of hours on the internet researching several doomsday scenarios. I first thought I needed a bunker when I was doing research. Started seeing all the severe weather we've been having. Tremendous amount of earthquakes, tornadoes. Just seems like those things have been getting worse. You're gonna have some type of catastrophic event that will change everything. The people who aren't prepping become zombies. They will kill you for anything that will help them survive. 